Hi everybody, this is Louise Fletcher with This Painting Life and uh, you're watching the very first in a new series of interviews called How to Be an Artist. Um, I called it that because as an artist who recently came back to painting and have only just begun to show and sell my work, I'm fascinated by the whole process of making art, um, selling art, talking about art and I want to get into all that with my guests. So without further ado, my first guest is Pauline Jans. Pauline is a um, full-time painter. She makes, uh, who lives in the lovely wine country of British Columbia in Canada. And she paints beautiful abstract paintings um, in acrylic and mixed media. And when I first met her online, I found her interesting for all kinds of reasons. She's um, extremely motivated and, and um, hard working person and she's got all kinds of creative ways to think about selling art and promoting herself and her work uh, so I chose to be my first guest um, so welcome Pauline it's really Thanks. nice to have you um, and before we get into selling and all of that I'm really interested in in your own journey because you I know had other careers before becoming a full-time artist and um, I'm, I'm wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about making that shift and kind of what have been the, the challenges and what have been the rewards of, of making the change. Right. Um, yeah, well, interestingly enough, when I grew up on a dairy farm, and I'll try to keep this brief, even though, you know, as you have a life, it's long uh, or appears long. But I um, always wanted to be an artist as a child. And um, living on a farm, I wasn't exposed to a lot. Uh, it was a large farm so, and out in the country, so I didn't really see a lot. However, I knew that I wanted to make beautiful things because that was the appealing thing to me. And I had tried to get into an art school at the age of 14 by writing, um, <laughs> writing this uh, school and providing a, a drawing and they said it's great but you're too young and I was I was actually quite devastated about that and I took it as a rejection and so I just kind of flicked it out of my head but it was always there and so when it was time for me to go to college I really didn't know what to do I tried modeling for six months I didn't like that I got into hairdressing because my mom said you know you'd be a good hairdresser or something but I actually was I specialized as a hair color technician in Toronto, and I did that for um, over 10 years, and I was very busy working in, in Yorkville, which is like sort of the hub of Toronto. Mm -hmm. But there was things about that industry um, that I didn't enjoy. I certainly enjoyed mixing color and the whole chemical part of that, um, but it, it seemed a little bit superficial uh, to me. And I eventually left Toronto and I came to Vancouver and I didn't know what I was going to do. I thought maybe I could be a salesperson for hair color. But I ended up doing some drawings one day. Uh, one was for my father for his birthday. And he, and he wasn't living in Vancouver. And um, he said, wow, you could be really good at this. And for some, that was like permission. Right. And so then I got into art school. I started taking classes in the summer and then I applied to get in in the fall and I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I just applied to everything. <laughs> and, and um, but having done the two years in art school, our teachers were telling us, you've got to keep going. So I applied to Emily Carr, but I did Emily Carr um, Institute of Art and Design is a very popular school in Vancouver. And I didn't know what I was going to do because I loved everything that I was doing. So I applied to three different um, programs, design, uh, painting and sculpture. And I got accepted in them all. So I thought, well, that's <laughs> right. <small. So laughs> that really helped I picked the practical route, which was graphic design, because I still, I, I wanted to make money. And I did that for 15 years. And um, I actually probably would still be doing that now if there wasn't a, a great merger that occurred. And the United States bought our company. And I, I did get offered a job and I did work with the company for three years. But they eventually... Um, 
down um my my position was eliminated and mm -hmm. and i was happy yeah about that so when that happened uh we took six months i just took six months to chill out i tried one business idea with my husband i didn't like it so we just we just sat down and said let's blue sky what do you want to do like so we decided to just up and leave and move somewhere else and i guess then uh, i started to really focus on my own art because mm -hmm. I didn't have to do anything for anybody else. We started a guest suite here. So that sort of took a little bit of pressure off of me being used to being an independent um, income earner. And now I wasn't. So I needed something to suffice because right. I wasn't used to having someone else pay my way. Right, right. Um, and so, but in doing that then, because I've always worked, you know, from a very young age, um, I needed actually that guest suite to help me paint because then I had to paint to provide art for the walls. And once right. I got that going and I had all the art up there, I was already in a routine of, okay, like mm -hmm. I can do this. Right. So that's kind of the journey of getting here. Right. Um, and, and so, was, and so the difference between you know those careers and you working for somebody else, and you you, you know exactly what you supposed you know they tell you what you're supposed to do, and especially graphic design, they give you an assignment, and then you go do it. And so the shift from that into completely working for yourself and finding your way as an artist. Tell me a little bit about that, because I think that's where a lot of people struggle. They know they want to make art, but they don't know what to paint or draw or sculpt and yeah. at that point they get stuck so how did you uh, find your way well that's a really good point because that was really difficult louise particularly um you know all the work up until that point i had been working for others working yeah. for my father working for the people who are having their hair colored and working for the client as a graphic designer so when I arrived, it was okay. My marketing brain came in and said, people who come to wine country are going to want to take a piece of wine country back. So it has to be landscapes. Right. And I hadn't done a lot of um, drawing or anything really up until this point. So my drawing and painting was very stiff. And um, I was really obsessed about getting everything the way it was and what you know like what i saw is what i had to get in the picture yeah and but i do but i also do a lot of studying particularly when i'm uncomfortable and i don't know what's going on <clears throat> i don't like that feeling so i do do a lot of research and i've got a gazillion books and now i use the internet a lot to basically pop my mind open because I still have kind of the mind of a girl on the farm. And so I, I'm always trying to open that up and, and have a broader way of looking at things and seeing things. So, you know, to be perfectly honest, the reason why I shifted, and this is going to sound a little unusual, I think, to someone who doesn't own pets, but when my when we moved up here and uh, my dog died within six months and he was my kid and yes i can um, i can i know that feeling <laughs> yeah he was and i don't have children i do have uh, my husband has two kids but hunter was my kid and <clears throat> he got sick quickly and then he got another cancer right after the first one within you know weeks and I knew that he was gonna, he had, he was gonna die soon. But I also, having lived on a farm, I knew you have to make tough decisions. So I will help him. But in a way to deal with that, I also made him a promise to make this difficult time. I needed to make it mean something moving forward to make it worthwhile right. to go through that pain. So I decided, I said, I said, I'm gonna paint you. And I'm going to paint the way I want because up until that point, Louise, I was quite frustrated about trying to paint landscapes so that people could buy them and take them home. And 
So that's what I did. I painted and drew Hunter for a year and a half. And then, um, and then I thought, okay, you, you know, you've done what you said you were going to do, but there was a second promise. So what is that? And I intuitively knew I hadn't thought about it much, but I intuitively knew I just want to go abstract and just let myself out. Right. I've been doing all this stuff for everybody for so long. I don't even know what I want. So that's why I chose abstract to just not know what was happening, not know what it was going to be, and then just go for it. And so let's talk, let's talk about that because that's really interesting, I think, to a lot of people. In terms of a process, so you, you're going to start a, an abstract painting or a series of abstract paintings. How do you begin? If you don't know what it's going to be, it's not a landscape now. So how do you begin? Right. Well, I've, tr I've done a number of different things because as you know, when you try something without having any information on how to do it, you're just making it up as you go along. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would yeah, love some really ugly abstract paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me, too. <laughs> me too, actually. They're like behind a cupboard somewhere. Yeah. Facing the wall. yeah. Um, well, I'll tell you what I do, what the things that have been successful, right? The things that have been successful uh, has been grabbing mark making tools like charcoal and, um, uh, you know, some, some water soluble drawing materials and I'll, I'll put it down on canvas and then I'll take gesso and I'll start I'll spritz, I'll start moving things around because I want to just play. I just want to play. And I've learned that this is, you know, this wasn't immediate because there was a lot of, okay, let's try shapes and let me you know. And, <laughs> yeah. and that would get yeah. me quite pissy with myself because it, inside it's like, I thought you didn't want to know what you were going to do. And, and I thought you were going to try to just like be free. So what's all this control going on? So there's a, often a struggle in my head with what, what right. am I doing and what I want to do and all that. So I will move, um, I'll move the material around with um, gesso. And, and I've been doing that for probably uh, the last year or two, and I quite like that. Recently, I've also just taken paint and started smushing it on the canvas and scratching into it. Again, mark making, because I find that the mark making is really quite freeing for me. Somehow paint on a brush locks my head into um more controlled behavior so uh, what i try to do is break that um mo by doing something different so i'll take a paring knife and i'll scratch into my paint or i'll you know scratch at it with my fingers or i'll put paper on it lift it off anything to almost destroy what i just did to right. lose control it's all about losing control and then coming back and it's a really a back and forth but that's how i'll get a painting started to just and then you know i'll step back and look at what do i see and what what feels good and what's bugging me and sometimes actually landscape makes me go oh hello <laughs> and i'll work it and then i'll go what are you doing you know there's a lot of chatter that goes on in here yeah. my husband must think i'm nuts <laughs> <laughs> no that's so interesting because i i have that same thing so i play for a while and then sometimes some paintings will quite quickly show me that they're going to be something or not not an object i mean just i can see where to take the painting so i can go in that direction but others it can be layers and layers and layers of cluelessness until something happens and Having, I think it's very difficult sometimes to have the patience to wait for the, to have the faith, I suppose, that something is going to come out of it when all you seem to be doing is making a mess. Um, I don't know, perhaps you don't have those days of making a mess. Oh, I have them. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably everyone does. But that's such an, it's, it's so interesting to hear that, that process. Um, what, what do you think... I mean, as an abstract painter, 
what do you think are the are the what's the great rewards in it for you well you had mentioned something earlier that I really want, I want to get to before I tell you rewards, because you mm -hmm. asked about challenges and I was thinking about that. And I thought, you know, what the biggest challenges as, as an artist for me is me. I'm yeah. the biggest challenge. Oh, a great point. Yeah. Yes. It's true. It's like, if I could just, cause, cause what I want is freedom. I want to be free. That is such an easy thing to say, but it's such a multifaceted concept. I want to be free to create and express myself. I have a lot of training to control, organize, and all that, but yeah. I don't have a lot of experience of being free. And the biggest challenge is me getting in the way of me. I know that's very difficult as a simple thing to say, and yet I'm sure we all know what that feels like. I bet everyone that sees this will know what that it will know exactly what you mean. Because sometimes you think, I could just, why can't I just stop being in the way? As you said, why am I making this so hard? It should be easy, but it isn't always. Yeah, well, it's like, if you could just leave the room now, um, I can get on with being me, you know? And the well, interesting wonder, thing, go sorry. ahead. No, I'm sorry for interrupting. I was just, I was just thinking, I wonder if that's because in our, it's interesting you said you were a graphic designer, so you had to have control there, but also in our lives, we, we have so many faces and so many personalities we have to have in different situations. You have guests, in the guest suite, you're one person, you're another person with your husband, another person with your pet, another person with your friends, different friends. And it's not false. It's just the, the way we have to operate in the world in order to work our way through it. But making art requires you to drop all of those and be whoever is really inside. And I think that most people don't know who that is. And that we also often don't know who and when you really in the flow does it feel to you like that's when all those other people got out of the way and you really came through yeah absolutely as a matter of fact i've had a, a, an experience in my life in my past i used to mountain bike and um i took classes for that because it's a dangerous sport um but what was amazing about mountain biking when I was, when I had a beautiful day mountain biking, I felt like I was at one with my bike. And, and when I was doing uh, mountain biking out of my head, you know, there was a lot, there's a lot to know and do and whatever. Um, but managing the terrain uh, is hard if I'm not really in the groove and when I am in the groove it actually felt like my bike was extended an extension of me and when I'm painting from that place of that knowingness of just like don't think about anything that's the thing and there's the same thing with mountain biking if I was thinking about other things I would have a hard ride I'd be falling I'd be hitting my elbow on the trees and things like that um, but when I was just in it, it was beautiful. And it's the same thing with painting. When I'm in it and I stop getting all these like, oh, it should be this and better do that. And all this kind of thinking business when I'm actually just here, I, I can, it's not, it's like I'm floating, you yeah. know, and I, and I, I lately heard myself making these sounds like, Mm, yeah, yeah. I, do that too. I do that too. I, do that. <laughs> I know, and I'm like, oh my god! I go, oh, like look at idea. that! Oh, that's great! Yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think that's so good for people to hear because um, if they are not able to do that yet, if um, because so often people are struggling to get to that point and feel like it will never come, and it, just to hear that. If you can do it, and if I can do it, anyone can do it. It's not, you know, it's there for everyone. It's just, be, 
I suppose it's keeping going long enough to reach that place or or practicing long enough in letting yourself go that you can get to that place where you really can feel that. But that's, that's fantastic. And Mm -hmm. how how has that changed your work over the years as you, as you got more able to do that? Do you see a shift in your work? Oh yes. Yes. It's definitely, it's definitely continuously moving. Um, you know, one of the things that I noticed as an abstract painter, also whenever I was doing realism, was that in, in that challenging part, was that any issues that I generally work on in life, they would be with me in my studio. None of them were different. Fear of making mistakes, that was happening on the mountain bike. Um, not trusting not trusting the bike, not trusting the process, not trusting, you know, doing many layers as you find your way. Um, Fear of rejection or not fitting in, you know, all these things that happen in my life generally, they happen in the studio. And um, so, you know, you mentioned reward and, and, and the change in my work. The change in my work is me becoming more and more the idea of myself as an artist versus the way I often feel, which is this struggle. You know, this struggle of being an artist is really a struggle being me with all this other stuff going on and then me wanting to be free. And as I keep going as an artist, my work reflects how I am trying new things, trying not to be afraid, trying to trust the process, trying to access that freer person inside. So it's evolving with me. Um, And you, you asked about rewards like that. That is a huge reward to see me being braver, me going out there and, showing new work that I'm not even sure I not sure if I I mean I like it because I tried it and I like it because yeah. I stuck with it and I like certain design elements etc but do I know if it's good or not I don't know but I'll put it out there anyway so trusting you know what's the worst that can happen anyway yeah and you know like I'm not yeah. a surgeon operating on somebody yeah yeah you know it's exactly I mean as I got more as I get more confident or comfortable with my own process for making art then I'm more confident and comfortable with other things and for example a year ago I never would have done this I never would have gone on a video I never would have interviewed anybody I've started to approach other artists about doing these interviews I never would have done that so the, the, all of I, I, I totally know what you're saying because it is art and life are the same thing. And as you get braver in one, you get braver in the other. And if you, I think for people watching, if, if you are stuck um, with your art making, that's what Pauline says, brilliant point to just think about where is this, where have I seen this happen to me in my life? Where do I do these same things? And because maybe if you identify the patterns, it helps you to be aware that it's not a problem with you not being able to paint. Like I'm, I'm not good enough. It's, it's other things that you, like, as you said, you replicate everywhere. That's, Mm -hmm. I I love that. That's just such a brilliant point. Um, It's just, yeah. (laughs) And is the reward in the process as well? Because I find it is for me. I mean, the reward in the feeling of doing it. Um, Oh, yeah. It's much of a reward as selling something in many ways. Yes, well, yes. And and I think the reward ultimately, uh, there's a couple. One is that, uh, of course, doing a beautiful painting is a reward and so is selling it. But if I had to really be honest, the reward for me is getting to be the person that I imagine myself to be. Because you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure if, I mean, I, probably you have had this happen, but I find that when I go out of my studio and I'm going for a walk, I think about myself in the studio and there's this wonderful vision of this confident, 
woman painting and making all this amazing work and then i arrive <laughs> and it's different and, and but the reward is that actually while i'm painting there are those times where i get so within that i am her the one that i was imagining while you know the, the imagined pauline i'm getting to be the painter that i imagine myself to be and that that is a huge reward because that to me is like the ultimate confidence. Yeah. You know, the one that's not worrying about everything and what they think and what, did I do that right? And is that acceptable? And you know, all that business doesn't exist anymore. I mean, how freeing is that? That's amazing. And um, so you, t you mentioned that that confidence and that freedom has resulted in you being able to show work that um, you're not even sure, you know, from an outside perspective, what people are going to think. And that was one of the things that drew me to you uh, in the first place was the, the creativity and kind of just um, not aggressiveness, just determination with which you have set about making an art career and set about putting your work out there, which is difficult to do. We all know to walk up to somebody and say, will you show my work is extremely difficult to do. And especially for artists who tend to be quite introverted. Um, not saying all artists are introverts, but many of us are. So can you talk a little bit about that, about how you actually market your work and how that's developed in the last few years? Sure. Um, well, I, I, I feel quite fortunate that I have kind of a strong nose of just following what feels good. And that's how I've gone through all my careers. And when we moved out here, um, I'm a, I'm, I, I was a shy person, but I also am pretty open now in the sense that I just, I just like to meet people. I like to say hi to strangers. I like to compliment them. And when I moved out here, we met some people that um, had a winery and we befriended them just by offering to pick grapes for free. And then I had the courage to reach out and be a Facebook friend. And then I was putting art up on um, Facebook and they could see it. And I, we also did some pruning for them. So, but we're not close friends, but the winery owner saw my work and he asked me fairly soon if I would like to hang my work in his uh, winery. And I said, actually I didn't respond. And I think Hunter died. And I, I wasn't ready. Uh, I wasn't ready. And I, but the next year, then I was scared because I thought, I think I lost my chance. And so I approached him and I said, does your offer still stand? And he's like, absolutely. And so, and, but you know, there was a lot of insecurity around, okay, like, is he going to like my stuff? I mean, I did this Brown series, his walls are like terracotta. Is it going to look okay? But I just kind of, um, you know what, there's this statement that I've always used, particularly as a graphic designer, fake it till you make it. Um, pretend like you know what you're doing and then stick your head in another room and go, ah! <laughs> <You know? laughs> and that's kind of how I handled getting my work into his, into his winery without showing, you know, my insecurities and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, at least, I hope. Um, but I've had my work there now for three years and each time I check with him, I don't assume that he's going to want me every year. I ask him if he would like my work next year, um, or, and a new series, if he'd be interested in that. So I do try to make sure that he feels respected and, mm -hmm. uh, appreciated that because, um, it's, it's a win-win situation, but I still want to him to understand that I really appreciate the opportunity to hang right, my work right, there. Right. Um, and do you pay him a commission for... No. Oh, that's really good. No. Um, but he just, he's seeing it as an opportunity to just make his place look nice. That's right. Right. I've always said to him, you know, I'm so grateful every time I hang. And he goes, I'm grateful you make my place look so great. Yes. So 
it's a really great um, relationship. And what, you know, I'm pretty particular. So for example, the last hang, I used white cards uh, for the prices and, the, and, and I knew right away it was wrong. And it was a lot of work to cut them all out and print them and all that. And it didn't matter. I went back, got some clear labels, printed them all again, went over there the next day, immediately, you know, it had to happen right away because it made his walls look like polka dots. And I right. didn't want that. I right. wanted his place to look like it was my place. And so I really try to respect uh, his place because I also want his place, right? Yes. I want. Yeah. 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 And um, now, did you also, you, you, um, you tried to hang, uh, was it in a cafe or a restaurant? nearby yeah. and yeah. i thought it was really interesting how you approach that just just talk about that for a sec well that actually was really um that stemmed from becoming a part of our studio tour so mm -hmm. in this area there in wine country there are all these small little towns and a few of them have studio tours and if you become a, a member of it you you get you can get onto their website you get brochures and you get signs that you can place out on your street or whatever and they had again through facebook me putting all my work up there one of the artists approached me and said we'd really love you to join the studio tour and i said well uh, you know i'm not ready um, and I wasn't, I didn't want people to come into my studio and think that they were going to get to see art on the walls because most of it's not ready. And I, so anyway, last year, um, last winter, we created a space down in our basement and turned it into a gallery. And then I felt like I could be part of the studio tour because now I could show people my work and I could invite them into my studio space so they can see work in progress as well, which I feel is kind of a little treat in a way that you yeah. get to see yeah. this, but also see stuff that looks like a mess and you did that, but it looked like that before or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But in doing that, being part of that group then, um, you know, I get people off the street and I'm not sure how, because I can't take credit for the, the cafe, except that I don't like to say no. And even though it was going to make it that I had to stretch a little and put pull together some paintings, um, and not a lot of artists from the studio tour wanted to be part of the cafe, but I said yes, like I'll mm -hmm. figure it out. You know, yeah, yeah. I'll get the paintings together, and I like to hang them in a series uh, as a series so they all live well together and they make the place look good, mm -hmm. which is the way I do the winery it's always a series it's not a mixture of series uh, it's the same way that I did the cafe so it feels like it belongs there right right, right. so both of those I was very um uh fortunate that um I was approached and yet I you know if I didn't put my stuff out there nothing would have happened yes I think that's very interesting actually I was just thinking when you were talking the winery came about because you, you first of all met the winery owner, but then even that reaching out on Facebook and becoming friends with local businesses. Um, and then once you're friends, they can see what you put on Facebook so they can see your artwork. And we just don't know how many restaurant owners, cafe owners, you know, we don't have wineries in Yorkshire, as far as I know. Um, but you don't know how many people in these places are looking for something nice to hang on the walls or sick of what they've got and might see your stuff and approach. And uh, the one thing I know, and I'm sure you would agree with this, is nothing happens unless you put yourself out there and let people know. Um, no opportunities come to you unless you stick your neck out. And it's scary to do it. Um, but in doing that, I mean, you've had great opportunities there to raise your profile and I can remember going in a cafe when I used to live in America and we went in a cafe in New York somewhere um, and they had these paintings on the wall that I've never forgotten they were abstract painting of horses and I don't even like horses <laughs> I wanted one of these paintings they were so incredible and then we inquired and there was a brochure there and the owner gave us a brochure but they were like ten thousand dollars and oh wow 
right okay well we can't afford that so but I remember that if you see something you love you really love then you will go ask about it you know whether you just because you're in a cafe and you weren't intending to buy art doesn't mean that something doesn't go wow you know that's amazing so I just think that's that's one of the things that for me I think is is really admirable admirable about what you've done and that I'm just beginning to get into so I really appreciate you sharing that all of that um we uh, to not let this go on too long I think we'll have one last question for you which I am going to ask everybody but since you're our very first inaugural guest <laughs> um, is if you had to give advice to somebody who was you a few years ago so you when you were thinking, right, I'm going to do this art thing. And it doesn't have to be someone who's doing it full time, but someone who's just going to be, become serious about making good art and selling good art. Um, this is really difficult to say, what's the one tip you would give, but what is the, what would you say to that person to help them get on their way a little bit faster? Well, you can, you can, you could apply this to whether you're a sculptor or a watercolorist or you like to draw or whatever, but I'll just use paint. If you want to paint and paint on canvas, then paint on canvas for you. Don't paint on canvas to sell to others. Right. It's really wonderful to sell to others, but that makes things so much more complicated and it's really hard to find oneself when you're not doing it for yourself. Right. Right. And I, I started, you know, oh, you know, wine country, everybody's going to want it. And so I started down the landscape route. And a lot of my stuff looks like landscapes anyway, because mm -hmm. I love outdoors. But thinking about someone else isn't going to get me to paint for me. It's going to get me to paint for someone else. And it, it's complicated or complex because we, you know, we're influenced by society from the get go, our friends, our family, our upbringing. There's so many shapings going on throughout our whole life that to find oneself really truly is a job in itself. And then if you were to go paint, and you think you're painting for yourself, that's already hard enough. Never mind thinking about selling. You know what? When you start selling, you'll have plenty of time to think about yeah. selling. <laughs> Trust me, it's gonna come. So I would just that's that's what I think. And that is not an easy task. But if you start it with that as your purpose, that's a lot cleaner then even the subtle uh, thoughts about, ooh, and then I can, you know, go to a cafe and let me see now how much would I make, you know, it, yeah. all that makes it very, it gets dirtied up. Uh, if, if I can use that word, it will dirty up your thinking. So if you can get to the basics, it's just really, I mean, it's creative, creating, creating something new, creating some within, from within, like that's a huge gift. Um, yeah, and I think I think what I learned, because um, I was a little bit similar in that when I first started, I, I'm in a touristy area of a different kind in the Yorkshire Dales. A lot of foreign and English tourists come here, and they come here to see the beautiful country, countryside. And I had thought, oh, and I'll paint, and I'll get a little gallery, and then they'll come and buy the paintings as souvenirs. And I had all <laughs> in mind, and so my the first paintings I sold were landscapes and. Um, fairly not abstract some abstract elements but basically straightforward landscapes and I was so pleased to sell them because it's a pat on the back but it wasn't a deep pleasure if that makes any sense it was like I had this feel a bit of a feeling of um well that's nice that you like my painting but you shouldn't have because it really wasn't that so, <laughs> um and now I I I my as my work's developing it's so different now when i sell something i feel a hundred percent confident that it was the very best i could do and proud of it and pleased and it's it's a completely different feeling so 
A, I think you sell more when you stop trying to sell, like you said, and B, you feel so much better about what you're selling. And, and yep. you know, I see my older stuff now in people's houses. If I, I've seen a few things in my friend's houses, I'm like, oh, I wish I could take that back and give you a different one. <laughs> right. I don't think it's very good anymore, but I suppose we all do that. Apparently that carries on for the rest of our lives. So now if people want to find your work, I am going to put links with, with this when I post this video, but tell people where they can find you so they can have a look at these lovely paintings. Yeah, thanks. Um, PaulineJansArt.com. I also have PaulineJans.com just because I can. And, right. um, um, I'm also on Facebook. I have a Facebook page as well, but, uh, but I still post on my personal page because that gets a lot more traffic just because yeah. the way Facebook pages are. And on Instagram, they're all Pauline Jans Art. Um, Perfect. Yeah. All right, perfect. Well, this has been wonderful, Pauline. Thank you so much. Really, you're welcome. It. Um, I think we could talk for a long time. I think we I could. Think yeah, <laughs> I think we could, and we'll probably do it. Maybe we'll do a follow up a little bit down the road. Oh, that'd be fun. Sure. Do. All right. Well, this was really great. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. All right. Bye bye.